Hello everyone and welcome to the discovering of the new Epson SureColor F2100, the direct -to garment printer. Thank you all for joining us and giving us a few moments of your day today. We've got a lot of information to go over and I apologize for the few minutes late start. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time to get everybody uh, logged on that was trying to get logged on. So I want to make sure that we're all seeing um, the presentation correctly. Today's presenters are uh, both myself and Tim Check with Epson America. Uh, Tim's on the line with us. Tim, you want to say hello? Hey, good morning. Good afternoon, depending where you're at. <laughs> Most likely afternoon. Yes. So I'm not sure. Tim, could you tell me? I just want to do a double check. Could you tell me what screen you're seeing on your screen? Uh, we have the uh, title screen so far still. Okay. I'm going to make a correction on this real quick. Bear with me, everyone. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Yes, as I was saying, today's presentations with myself, I'm Darcy with Coastal Pro, a division of Coastal Business Supplies, and we do have Tim Chuck on here with Epson. And Tim and I have a, a nice uh, assortment of information that we're going to be sharing with you today. Um, we're going to be going over, as I said before, an uh, overview of the Epson's new SureColor F2100, the direct -to garment printer. Uh, Tim's going to do that portion of the webinar. Uh, then I'm going to join in and give you some information beyond the printer to the production and give you a little idea of your initial investments and your return on investments. And then we also have some promotions. And of course, we do want to answer some questions that you guys might have. Darcy, real quick, the, yes. um, I think the, uh, the screen still looks like it's on the, the, still the title slide. Hmm. We're just uh, discovering. You may need to click the the share or the the show button. I think. Uh, yeah, there we go. We see some change. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for letting me know that. That would not have been a very good webinar had they not seen everything that we have to take show them. So, uh, before we do get started, we do want to take a poll. Uh, so let me get that going here. We are distributing the poll out to everyone. If you guys could please answer some questions here. We wanted to know how you guys are as far as um, what you're doing with direct -to garment uh, If you're new to it, if you've already got a direct -to garment printer uh, and you love it, or maybe it's one that you have and you're still needing to get some more information on it, you're still learning the process, or if you're just interested in getting into direct -to garment and then we do have some people, maybe just none of the above, they just like being um, aware of what some new products are out on the market. So everyone's answer looks like getting a good response to that poll. Looks like it's a lot of people are either just, this is brand new to them, Tim. direct -to garment is new to them and they're just wanting to learn about it. Um, we have some just wanting to know um, really what direct -to garment is about, want to keep current on what's available. And um, got some that do have a direct -to garment printer and some love it and some are still learning about it. <laughs> about 78% of the votes are being casted. All right, let's move on here. We're going to close this out. Thank you for everybody who's voted. I 
And from that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim. Tim, if you could uh, introduce everybody to this sure. new printer. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Actually, that poll was quite helpful to get an idea of, of what everybody's, where you're roughly coming from. So uh, my name is Tim Check. I've been with Epson for close to a little over eight years now, uh, but in large format and professional imaging for plus 20 years. Jeez. Um, but today we wanted to go over a little bit about just our, our new uh, our newest product, our Surecolor F2100. It's a direct-to-garment printer. Uh, and this is a type of printer that you can load in a garment like a shirt or a hoodie. Um, different types of products can go in here more than just t-shirts. Um, it allows you to print directly onto the garment, um, as it says. So we started, uh, Epson's been involved in this for quite some time. We've had the number one market leading uh, product on the market for several years called our Surecolor F2000. And what we've done is over those past several years, four or five years, we've picked up a lot of feedback on how can we make this printer even better. Um, some little quirks and, and you know, frustrating features that people have talked about. Um, we try to incorporate much of that feedback that we have. This printer is really based on, um, it was really inspired by the users who use this, the ARC F2000 printer and direct-to-garment printers on how to make a better product. Um, and this is our new shirt color F2100. We're going to go through just briefly today, not a tremendous amount of detail, but briefly a little about what this printer is, uh, what its benefits are. And certainly, as you can see on just on the slide already, um, the Arshikolor F2100 delivers even more better reliability with lower user maintenance, so very little maintenance required. Good productivity uh, for this, as well as a, a beautiful print quality. So this uh, it's an exciting printer, um, and let's keep uh, let's keep sticking to the next one. So this is a little uh, side view of what this printer looks like. Um, it's for those of you who have seen a Shurcolor F2000 printer, um, the actual footprint is the same. Um, but this printer has obviously a different color scheme to it. Uh, but it's a very, um, in the world of direct to garment printing, it's actually a pretty compact machine. Um, it allows you to have um, it, multiple different platens that can change around. So if you're printing on a, a double XL size shirt, you want to have a good platen to work with that. Or if you're printing onto a baby onesie, uh, what type of uh, platens will hold those garments for you? Uh, we want to make sure that the, the system is compatible with a lot of different options so you can put in different types of products into the printer. Um, other than that, the one thing that's important to note is this printer, it is a, um, it is a four color plus white printer. So this allows you to print onto light garments, dark garments, uh, black garments and cotton shirts and even blended polyester uh, cotton blends of shirts as well or materials as well. Um, but let's take a little closer look at some of the features that we are going to highlight in this printer. Um, let me see if I can... I think, yeah, if you, yeah, perfect. Um, so one of the pieces here, when we start loading about, one of the things we try to do is how do you make this printer a little more easier to uh, load shirts in here or load different materials into it? Uh, we made it where we can put in materials up to about an inch thick, uh, about 25 millimeters, and the printer can adjust the height of the plat in the table. Uh, we can drop that down in half millimeter steps. So there's actually 50 different steps we can get there to really fine tune it to make sure you get the best image quality, um, with on whatever the material is, whether it's a really, really heavy duty, thick um, uh, hoodie or a jacket um, or a really lightweight t-shirt uh, works quite well. Something new we've added is a feature called a garment grip pad. And this is a adhesive uh, pad that grips onto the actual fabric of the garment. And this is applied to the, uh, the table, the platen of the printer. It makes it real easy, simply just lay the shirt down on top of it. There's a little smoothing tool to help get out any wrinkles if you have that there. Um, but it makes loading the, of the garments into the printer much faster and also much more easier. So we get into the next piece, the core of our uh, F 2100 and actually our direct to garment printer is the print head itself and this is a industrial grade print head that's designed for direct to garment inks um, the inks can be quite a bit some of you might be familiar with dye sublimation um, having a print head purpose built for sublimation gives you that good durability but the inks are a little bit more lighter weight with sublimation where they in and, and for photo printing they're lighter weight inks when you get in direct to garment uh, textile inks are quite heavy quite thick this head's designed for that thicker, the white inks that are will be pushing through the print head, as well as also the, the colors that are going to be there. Print head's designed to last for the, the, the machine life, keeps this thing running, um, and it's industrial grade. So there really is very little maintenance required for this. This is meant for direct-to-garment printing. It's not a repurposed photo printer uh, being put in here. Uh, this is purpose-built just for direct-to-garment printing. We take a little closer look at some of the features that print head helps us deliver. Um, with the Epson Surecolor F2100, we've added a new image processing technology called Precision Dot. 
And actually in the print head, this gives us the ability to do variable droplet um, uh, inkjet printing. What that sounds like a big mouthful of words to say, but basically what this means is you get a very fine uh, precision uh, brush as well as a big paint roller brush. We can go fast, but we can also keep a lot of detail. Rather than having one fixed size drop of ink going down there, one type of paintbrush, uh, we have multiple brushes in the printer and it can use them in the same stroke as it's covering that garment to really give you sharper detail, retain a lot of that detail that's in there. But if you're having gradients, uh, a fade from a red to a black on a, on a nice dark shirt, um, it's a very smooth transition without any a lot of speckling or grain added to the to the image. And this is core. This is built with the print head, but also with the software. The two work as a match system to deliver that higher image quality um, that's there. With the uh, another feature that's new on the F2100 that we've uh, we're really excited about. We've heard this from a number of customers. Is We'll print, uh, anybody that's familiar with screen printing, if you're trying to print onto a darker garment, are used to putting down a white underbase um, to get, all, when you put your colors down on top, you have a nice bright white surface to start with and your images look really good. Um, direct garment's no different in that sense. So we'll start, we'll put down a nice, uh, good solid white underbase on the print or onto the garment. But when we come down to put our top coat on, we'll put down our colors, but wherever there's white, pure white in the image, uh, whether that's a logo, a name, a text, uh, or the image has white in there, we can enable something called a simultaneous highlight white that allows for a double hit of white at the same time it's doing the color. Um, the advantage to this is you get really good opaque bright whites, uh, but without having any speed. Uh, there's no loss in print speed in doing this. And the best part about it is over the course of a large garment where you're printing this, it may only add one or two cents uh, to the total cost of the shirt. So it makes it uh, very cost efficient, doesn't change the hand feel of the shirt, um, but it gives you that much bright white, good, uh, good appearance by using this feature called simultaneous highlight white. <clears throat> Speaking about all that white, the inks are very important to the system. So we had our print head, which is the, the core of there, but going through the veins of the printer is the ink. And this is really, um, it's not just a, any old ink that goes into it. We spend a lot of time, we have a dedicated team of chemical engineers who build inks um, for this. This is all Epson developed ink sets. Uh, it's a number of features to the inks that make this really good, but the most important things that people want to know is, is it safe? So if you're printing onto a baby onesie, will that baby be, you know, they're probably going to touch it or get that in their mouth at some point. Will it be safe? And yes, it is. Um, it has a global worldwide standard um, uh, safety organization called OECOTEX uh, that we have that eco passport certification for it. And that also meets the, uh, the US CPSIA requirements for product safety. But on there, it's also safe for the operators. So it's something that not every, most of the other products out in the market, um, while the finished product may be safe, the actual inks that the operator, if you touch the ink or you get it on your hands, um, our ink has no um, health standards or health issues uh, related to it all. There's nothing at all. And many of the other products on, you'll find on the market do have some concerns that you wanna make sure you take precautions with. But also with that, that's one thing to have safety in the product, but the other part is how good will that shirt last? When you walk away from it, people don't really care how it was printed. Um, it's about what that shirt looks like after it's been worn a number of times and washed. Um, we test our products in it with our inks on a, onto a garment. We can score on the AATCC. There's a standard testing for this for washability and perspiration on a one to five scale. And our inks will reach that five, which is a perfect uh, score of over plus over 100 plus wash cycles uh, that are in there. And last part about the ink is if you are stocking up for, for doing this, sometimes depending if you print a lot or you don't print a lot, our inks are the only product in the market that have a two year shelf life. Uh, most of the products that you'll find out there are usually running about 90 days before white ink can build up. Um, our inks are very safe and you can just uh, shake them. It'll redisperse all the colorants that are in there and all the white ink particles will re <clears throat> recirculate through and that will prevent things from having um, clogs in the, the print header as well as also things leading to a failure. A lot of that has to do with the ink and that's why I'm spending a little more time on this, but it's a really core piece of the, um, of the directed garment is making sure you have a good wide color gamut, but a rich white uh, ink set that's not gonna hurt a printer or cause issues. So we start getting into, um, not just on inks, but when you do print with, uh, one thing just, uh, so there's a number of people who are new to or interested in direct garment, but don't have a lot of experience with it. When you print onto a light colored garment where you're just putting down uh, color, so this may be a, a white shirt or a light yellow or, or a spot that's in there, um, a lot of times you can print just directly onto a raw shirt. There's no, no treatment needed. 
Uh, but when you do print onto a dark garment where you're going to put down white ink, uh, in order to have that white ink stay nice high on that surface, um, you do need to apply a pretreatment to that. And that can be applied a number of different ways from a paint roller to a sprayer to an actual dedicated pretreatment machine. Um, but in this, we, we also make our pretreatment fluid that matches with that ink set so you can get very good vibrant colors. Um, the white stays very white. It doesn't create a film on the shirt, so you won't feel this uh, sticky or very starchy feel. Um, but it also has very little staining. What I mean by that is sometimes when you put this pretreatment onto like a, a red shirt, sometimes people may notice a little bit of a box area where you'd see that uh, pretreatment fluid there. Our inks have one of the lowest amount of color uh, discoloration to a shirt that's on there, which means if you make a print, uh, on a garment, you can put that right into a store shelf and sell that or send that right to a customer. There's no need to wash it or put in uh, a, a little a handout on there saying, hey, just FYI, when you wash it, it'll go away. But you can take our prints right off the printer. Once they're dried, you have to cure them uh, with heat. But once they're dried, um, there's no, you can be able to sell them right away without much, with hardly any uh, issues at all. And it's a beautiful looking print. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit, a uh, little bit congestion here with all the uh, spring uh, blooms. Uh, was one part that's one. Th if anybody, as you guys look around for direct-to-garment printers, one thing you'll see is a lot of people will have concerns about maintenance. So, what is it? It's one thing to print a garment and make a shirt look wonderful, but can you do it repeatably? Um, the big thing for us with our F2100 is we really want to take this a new, a next level, than, better than anything else in the market. We've introduced an automated inline cleaning system that does not use ink. Um, and what this does is basically, as you're using the printer, our, the white ink itself, when you print onto a garment, uh, when that gets pushed through the printer and gets cleaned in there, it's very similar to uh, what people might call, if you have a can of whiteout or a little jar of whiteout, if you take the little brush out of the whiteout or the correction fluid and you let it sit out in the air for a while, it gets kind of really clumps up, gets pretty thick and gets crusty. White ink can do that when it gets exposed to air. Um, one of the big parts with any of the direct garment printers is how do you deal with that? So when you when they, they spit a little bit of ink or they flush a little bit of ink down the drain, um, that ink's going to clump up. On the Epson F2100, there's an inline cleaning cartridge, uh, and that will automatically, if you turn the printer off, it will automatically make sure it will spray a little bit of this cleaning solution around the printer maintenance area and do that automatically for you. So you don't need to do that. Spray it spits out the right amount. Um, and it works out to about, on average, is about $8 a month of that cleaning solution that will get used if you're using the printer every day. If you leave the printer powered on, um, not a problem. It will do it based on a time, but it's not using the ink. It's just using that cleaning solution. And this goes a long way in making sure the print head health and the overall health of that printer stays top notch. Speaking of having good, clean areas, uh, we know with printing onto garments and, and shirts and hoodies and stuff, there's a lot of lint. Uh, that comes along with that. And so we've done a number of things. You can't control everywhere where the printer is going to be, uh, but what we can do is at least try to control as much as we can within the printer. Uh, and so we do that two ways. We we have a uh, air filtration system that pulls all the air or in the print zone where the head's moving back and forth, pulls that off to the left side through an air filtration system. But also we know that there's still going to be a little bit of uh, bits of lint still floating around there. And actually on the print head carriage, there's an area before the print head that has a, a charged zone that will actually be sacrificial area. It will attract any dust and lint uh, to that area so that it doesn't get in the way of the print head. Last thing you want on a shirt is you get dust and fibers that are blocking part of the print head and then you end up with a poor quality shirt. Um, so this is a way, this clean environment system is a way to make sure that as you're printing, uh, that the area, the printer's working correctly in the print quality, that you're going to have less waste uh, of the products because you're going to have better quality printing uh, with a less prone to uh, nozzle blockage or any type of thing to deflect the images. I'm sorry, the ink on the image. <clears throat> Another thing for reliability of this printer is we try to make sure on the white ink is one of these, the ink is very heavy, so it does um, like to, to settle out. Our ink, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's something that we build that this ink, when it settles out, that you can simply just shake the cartridge and it will redisperse and it's good to go again. Um, as the printer sits in the printer, though, um, we'll filter that ink, we'll recirculate the ink through the printer. It doesn't waste it. It just goes through a loop where it's being pushed through a new filter. So if anything does happen to you get any contaminants or anything in the printer, it will be filtered out even before it reaches the print head. 
So on the Shekel RF21, we actually filter the ink in three different locations. In the actual white ink cartridge um, that's there, so we'll on the cartridge as it gets plugged into the printer, it gets filtered. As it goes into the printer, there's an offline filter that will, or sorry, there's a filter off the carriage that will, will push through and filter all that ink out. And then as a last resort, right up on the carriage where the print head is, there's a filter just before that. And those are ways how we know that that will prevent any buildup. If you leave the printer off for a few weeks uh, and you turn it back on, you're not going to have a big uh, catastrophic failure of the print head because a clump formed and went to the print head. All that filtering is going to prevent that from happening. The last little bit for the maintenance side, and then we'll get to more of some of the fun stuff, um, is just, just a quick look in uh, in the right side of the printer. Epson is the only manufacturer that uses a thing called a fabric wiper. Um, you may hear some people talking about a wet capping station and things. Those are Band-Aid solutions to um, solve probably where that ink can dry. What we do with uh, ours is as we're printing, uh, after the end of a print, we'll come over and that fabric wiper if you kind of think of this as a, uh, there's a little bit of buildup of ink on that print head or any of that lint that was picked up while it was printing. Rather than simply parking the print head in these caps or into a liquid where all that contaminants are going to float around in there, we have a fabric wiper that will wipe that print head, make sure it's clean. It's kind of like a tissue box. Um, after about, give or take about 750 shirts or so, it's just a replaceable unit. You take it out, you put a new one in. And the best way I like to look at this is, is, is truly like a tissue box. You always get a nice clean surface uh, to wipe that print head with. And that way when it does seal for the night, um, you don't have any buildup or any spots where you get all this gunk building up that's in there. This is a great way and this is how it really makes sure that the, the reliability of that printer works well. But the really exciting thing is, is on a daily basis, this means there's no maintenance. Now, the only really thing you do is just turn the printer on, print a uh, check to make sure all the nozzles are firing correctly. And then once a week is just to clean around the capping station area and clean around the print head. It takes about 10 minutes uh, the first time you go through and do it. And then after that, it gets faster and faster. We're going to switch gears a little bit. So I've covered the maintenance of the printer. And, and the reason why we spent so, or spent so much time with this, this is probably by far um, as you're getting into considering adding direct-to-garment to your business, whether you're doing promotional products today with a dye sub or you're just looking to do your screen printing and you want to add this in, maintenance is usually one of those areas a lot of times people overlook until they have a printer and then they, oh, it's a, it's a pain. So that's why we wanted to spend a little bit of time on that. That's a, It's a really a big thing. As you start going, it's not a matter how fast you can always print. It's about how easy is it to be able to get those jobs done and be done, do it reliably. With that, let's take a quick look on some of the other parts to it. So our, our product does come with full-featured software called Epson Garment Creator. It's Mac and Windows uh, uh, compatible. It works from both systems. It's identical. Um, it'll drive uh, both our F2000 as well as our F2100. And there's a lot of features that are in this software that make it really kind of pretty slick. Uh, you can use third-party like a RIP software uh, if necessary, but the Garment Creator itself it deals with most of the things that people want to really uh, – to controls that you want to have over a garment. And for anybody that's familiar with screen printing, one of the things you'll see on like a light garment or printing on a light shirt, uh, there's a couple of modes that we've added into this more than just your drop an image in and click print. Uh, it is really easy to do that. Uh, but some of the modes that we add in there are a little more specialty is a thing called ink blot reduction. And this is a way what we'll do is we'll actually separate the image out. We'll print all the yellow of the image first and then layer on on a second pass. It will layer in the cyan, the magenta, and the black. And this is a great way to control things where sometimes the yellow uh, can, um, as people are familiar with screen printing, yellow can be pretty powerful in the color. Uh, and sometimes you don't want it to mix when, when you want to have it down, have a chance to dry into the garment first before you start putting those other colors in there. It gives you a cleaner appearance, a little bit uh, a smoother detail, and your darks are, are, can stay very vibrant in that dark. Speaking about having more vibrant color, there's also a mode called a double strike. And so depending on what mode you're in, you can either try to do one coat of, of printing to the uh, one coat of ink to the print uh, garment, which is a great way to do it um, at a higher quality mode. Or you can move it down to a lower quality move, but do some lower, lower quality mode, but do a double strike. And what I mean by that is you print the same image twice on the image. The first coat goes on, it kind of gets a chance to dry into the garment. And the second coat, the ink stays up a bit higher. It will give you quite a bit more vibrancy to it. And kind of the analogy I always like to look at is you can put, if you're painting a wall at home, it's similar to like trying to put one thick coat on versus two light coats. Uh, you can print those light coats. If you can do them as twice as fast as doing that one heavy coat, um, this gives you the ability to get brighter, bolder color uh, with really little to no time penalty for it. 
the other part though is people always ask how much does it cost to make a shirt? So I'm glad that I saw that a lot of you are newer or considering an interest in what the direct garment printing uh, looks like. With Garment Creator, there's a built-in job estimator. And the exciting thing is if today you want to go up and if you go on to the uh, support.epson.com website, you can download Garment Creator. Uh, you don't have to have a printer, but you can download it. You can put images in there, change different modes. And there's a job cost estimator that you can put in there. It will tell you exactly how much ink that job would be. Uh, if you put in the cost or your sell price, what you'd want that to be, what, what your total cost would be for that garment. Uh, and it's a great idea just to give you an idea of how much uh, direct garment printing, um, how much a shirt would cost to produce it this way. Uh, and just to find out if is it the right fit for the, the business that you're running today. Um, but it's also good if you're quoting someone out for a large job where every penny does count. Um, this is also a good tool if you send, have if they provide you the artwork. It's a good way to get an idea of how much it's going to cost you so that you can price it right where you're not overpricing it. Uh, for that customer and pricing yourself out of the business, but you're also not losing money either. Similar on the, we know most of the people aren't just printing on white shirts. So dark shirts are very, uh, is a, the main thing that we know people want to do. Um, and a couple of modes that we have there is a product. If you know you're printing onto a black shirt, uh, it'd be kind of silly to put down a white underbase and then print black uh, down to get to a black point. Why not just use the black of the garment? And so that's what we've done. We have a uh, use garment black mode that's in here. And what it will do is knowing that the garment's black, uh, it will not print black ink uh, or solid blacks. It will use that the darkness of the garment to actually shadow the area. So if you wanted a dark red, it's not going to put down a very strong white underbase and then a lot of red. It's only going to put down a little bit of white underbase and then just a little bit of red to get that darkness and tone. The advantage is it saves you a pretty good amount of money because you're not putting down a lot of ink and you're keeping the hand feel uh, where you can feel where the ink's on the shirt. It keeps it very minimal so it feels very soft. Um, the layout tools that are here makes it really easy to uh, add different images. So if you're putting, a, if you're doing some jer or team, team apparel uh, or workwear where you wanted to put a name on the back or a name on a pocket, um, you can simply put in your image and then just add in text uh, to do that. Or you want to put a number, you want to put several extra, you want to put a logo onto a shirt uh, where we already have a design. It's really easy to do that in Garment Creator just to be able to add those different uh, objects in there. And again, the, the software works pretty much with any type of uh, standard graphic file format. Um, so if you're in Corel or, or if you're in Power, uh, sorry, Photoshop, uh, one of those type of applications or InDesign or Illustrator, um, as long as you can export out a, uh, a graphic file, PNG, TIFF, JPEG, BMP, you name it, um, the printer will be happy. Um, and it works really easy with that. Just bring it in and away we go. Um, something that's kind of ties to our support, but it's always worthwhile uh, mentioning. It's not just for support, but it, the printer comes um, standard with a one-year on-site warranty. Uh, what we mean by this is this covers basically everything uh, to do with the printer. So if there's an issue with the print head, um, we send out a service technician. They'll be out there typically next business day uh, to replace that part if there's an issue with it. If there's something wrong with the control panel, can we fix it? An ink cartridge doesn't read right, or sometimes if people say, hey, you know, the cartridge says it's empty, but it's halfway full, give us a call, we'll replace that. Um, but it's not just for the parts and labor. That, that one-year warranty covers parts and labors, everything on site. But we do have free lifetime for the, the long as you have that printer, there is technical support available. Uh, it's here based on, uh, sorry, in California is our call center for that. And it's just a team of people who focus only on our professional imaging products. Um, and so this is where if you had questions on settings or you're not getting the print quality, they're a good a good spot to help kind of figure out what might be the item that's there to help diagnose that issue. A lot of times you don't actually have to have a service tech out there. So rather than waiting a day to have someone come out there, they may be able to solve your issue right there on the spot. And that warranty, that one year that covers the parts and labor, you can extend that for up to three years total. Um, and as long, anytime during the first year, you can add on that warranty. Uh, so as long as you're under coverage uh, or you're, you're covered, you can continue to stack those uh, warranties on there for up to three years. So talking about some speeds and feeds, um, I won't go too much on this. But we'll just leave it up here. This is uh, for a standard kind of shirt uh, that might be a 10 inch wide, 8 inch tall chest design. On our on the F2100, our default standard print quality is going to knock out a shirt like that in under 30 seconds. Uh, it's a pretty fast machine. But what we've done is we've added additional modes in here. So depending on the quality level that you want, 
some people always want to maintain the highest quality. Other times the shirts may be a basic uh, event shirt that just needs something pretty light. You can make that go faster or you can certainly bump up that quality to have more vibrant colors uh, with there. But on average, it's under 30 seconds for a, a nice good sized shirt on a white garment. And then when we go over to dark garments, um, since we are going to put down on a black shirt, we'll put down a white underbase first and then we'll follow that on with color on top. On there for a similar size shirt, we're under, under 90 seconds or a minute and a half for that type of shirt. And again, there's still a lot of controls that are available to make that go faster or to, if you want to bump that quality or get more vibrancy in certain there is the, if the image needs it. Um, you certainly have more, a lot of controls over that to be able to get that print quality um, and the speed. We're putting more control in your hands rather than Epson saying you must have this level of quality. We're love it, letting uh, users decide what they need and give them the control for it. So this is the, if I, if I had my one word to say or my one slide to show, I guess, there's a lot of things on here, but the big thing for us with Epson is it really, we do build our own print heads and we do build the inks. It's our engineering uh, teams that build these. They don't work in a vacuum. They work together. Uh, the teams work together to make sure that the ink is being designed as well as the print head together as a match system so that we know we'll have good, reliable uh, durability of that printer. We're also going to have that wash fastness. With Epson, we don't want to have any risk at all of having things that are in there about dangerous inks or having issues with that. There's no GHS warning indicators with our inks or our pretreatment. We know those are important pieces to that. We pair that together. We build our own printers in our own Epson factories. We have our own image processing technology that goes in there along with our own software. And we stand behind the product that's out there. So there is always, again, lifetime product support uh, available for it. Uh, free, as well as also the product uh, uh, labor and parts and labor are covered under warranty that's in there. It's really the one kind of one provider to that. There's no finger pointing. It's kind of everything all comes together through one spot, a total turnkey system. All right. All right. Thank you, Tim. There you go, bro. That was good information. So. Uh, Tim's done an excellent job of telling you guys all about the direct-to-garment printer that Epson has for us, the F2100. Uh, for us, we like to, um, here at Coastal, take it one step beyond the printer and go a little bit beyond uh, into the printing factor of how, how our customers are using these printers. So we wanted to take some information here. Uh, obviously, you've got, for people who are getting into direct-to-garment Printing. Here are some of the different perks that you may or may not think about. Um, if you're a screen printer, you'll have a, a moment when customers come up and they want to, uh, they have a low order, um, low order. So what I mean by that is they might come in and say that they need six shirts or 12 shirts or, or 24 shirts. That's really not an order that screen printers want to fill because there's so much um, prep time putting the screens together and time to wash out the screen. So they, they tend to steer away from those those types of orders. The direct-to-garment printing, it gives you that opportunity to say yes to those orders. And it's such a quick turnaround time. person brings you the designs, you can print them right there, and it's a quick turnaround. There's no cleanup or prep time involved. It's such a, a easy user-friendly process to learn. We here at Coastal help out a lot of customers with either direct-to-garment or dye sublimation, laser printers. I would say with the direct-to-garment printing, it's a very um, easy process to learn. Uh, pretty compact. It takes up very less uh, low floor space is needed. Uh, outside of the printer, you need a heat press and that's it and it's definitely less expensive and more manageable than other water-based printing systems. So pretty much low setup, less labor, and less time to print so you can get to that profit making a little bit quicker. Uh, speaking of screen printers, because that's where um, you may or may not be a screen printer, but if you are or if you're looking into adding garment decorating uh, to your wheelhouse, here's a good a visual of showing you what direct-to-garment printing the steps are compared to screen printing. 
So for instance, if you are a screen printer at the bottom, you'll see there that you have to create the design. That's the same whether you're doing DTG printing or screen printing. With screen printing, you've then got to make the film positives. So you have to make sure you have a screen that's available and you have to expose each color. So if a person comes in and they have design, they are going to have to, and their design has four colors on it, they're going to need to make four screens. So each color has a screen. That's why screen printers have to charge for each screen setup because they have to make a screen for every single color. So you'll see the different steps at the bottom there for making, um, in this situation, there would be three screens for three colors and then you would have to print the three screens. And then afterwards, then you dry it, and then you have the finished product. With DTG printing, you're pretty much doing the same with setting up the graphic. You lay the shirt into the garment printer. It prints whatever design you need it to print. And then with the black shirt, you do have to add in the pre-treatment, we'll, which we'll explain a little bit more of that feature later. But it does eliminate quite a few of the, the processes of screen printing. Uh, once the shirt has been printed, you do have to cure the ink onto the fabric, which would require the heat, trans, uh, heat press. And then you've got your finished product. And, you, and then definitely want to store that file in case the customer comes back and says, you know, instead of one shirt, I need multiple shirts, which you can definitely do there too. I want to also talk about the different types of fabric or apparel when it comes to uh, working with direct -to garment With direct -to garment the uh, apparel that you would work with is any type of natural fiber. So a cotton fiber, a shirt, a ring spun is definitely the best, uh, but any natural fiber, bamboo, hemp, those are the type of fibers you want, uh, fabrics that you want to work with. And then my picture here in the middle, it's showing you the difference between a cotton shirt and then the ring spun cotton. And you'll notice on the cotton shirt, the one on the left there, you see those different like wisps hanging out. With a cotton shirt, it's, it lays down a little, like you could, it has a soft hand feel, but a ring spun shirt has an even softer hand feel. And that's because the, way that the fabric is woven together. It's a tighter fabric. It's a tighter um, weave is what I'm trying to say. So when the fabrics uh, are printed on with the DTG printer, you'll see with a cotton shirt, it looks great, but a ring spun looks a little bit more crisp. And that does create a better image when you're printing out uh, your design. There are some fabrics that you do want to avoid. And one of the ones would be a polyester shirt. With DTG printing, there's uh, the polyester is, is not a friend. The ink would not adhere to the polyester. Um, performance wear is some another one that's uh, typically one that is, um, you'll find in the sports market. And then you definitely want to stay away from anything that's 50% cotton or less. So um, we do see some we do see some people printing on shirts that contain less than 50% 50, 50%, but we do advise against it. Um, when printing on like sweatshirts or pants, you'll you'll not get the best results either. The same results. Um, the results with the 100% ring spun cotton shirts are definitely just a better way to go. So if you are new to getting into direct to garment printing, we've kind of shown we're showing here where people will start out at the beginners. Uh, if you're if you're new, you want to stick to printing probably just t-shirts. And you know, find the good a good brand or style that you're comfortable with starting out with. There's a wide variety of, of colors that you can work with, but we do recommend starting off with a white shirt um, as you're just beginning. 
get comfortable with how with what settings you want to work with within Garment Creator. And then next, bring on a black shirt or a colored shirt. That will help you um, just get more comfortable until. And then once you you've mastered uh, DTG print, printing, then start experimenting and and bringing on. Um, the next line of maybe hoodies or thicker materials. Uh, for our more expert DTG printers, they uh, are jumping in um, and trying their hands out on making uh, shoes, hats, towels. Um, there's so many more items beyond just t-shirts with uh, DTG printing. So when I mentioned I'll get back to the pre-treatment of the garment, here's a, uh, the pre-treatment liquid is applied onto the shirt by either like a hand sprayer or a pre-treatment machine. This allows the, then after you've, you've sprayed the shirt, you want to allow it to air dry or maybe even dry under a heat press. Uh, then we do recommend pressing it for a bit of a time to uh, set the pretreatment. The layer should be pretty close to invisible or maybe even completely invis invisible before you print onto the shirt. The purpose of pretreating the colored shirts here, as you can see the image on the left, that shirt was not pretreated. And when I print the image, what happens is the ink just passes through and the white ink just gets saturated. The pretreatment um, blocks that ink from passing through into the garment. The white, like I said, the white ink just uh, soaks right into the t-shirt and leaving the rest of the colors with nothing to really set on top of. It's, it's kind of a muddy mess due to the rest of the shirt being soaked through into the fibers and, and bleeding into each other. So always pre-treat a t-shirt, especially if you want something, a brighter image. You may be able to pull off a light gray shirt um, or like a light tinted white shirt, but, but that's about it. Outside of that, we definitely recommend pre-treating a shirt. Um, there are a few brands of pre-treated um, garment shirts available, but generally pre-treating the shirt with your own pre-treatment liquid and ink should be the, um, the best way to go. So, and we, there are different brands also of pretreatment, but we definitely recommend working with the Epson SureColor pretreatment liquid because it's compatible with the Epson's uh, direct to garment inks in the printer. Uh, the inks, uh, the pretreatment does come in concent concentrated and it needs to be uh, diluted down with distilled water. And we do recommend using the pretreatment process. Uh, on the colored shirts. So here is a, a good view of the different types of equipment you would need to get started outside of obviously the pretreatment machine. One thing that's nice is that the um, garment creator program that Tim talked about earlier, it is both Mac and Windows compatible. So you can use work with either one of those systems. We do say that you do need to work with a some type of artwork file or program, whether it's CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, all of those will be able to, to work with uh, just fine. A pre-treatment system, uh, you can work with a sprayer, a hand sprayer. Uh, we have some customers that start off that way. Some customers will start off just printing on white shirts and they don't get into the dark shirts. And some customers do want to print on the dark shirts. So you can do that with a hand sprayer. Uh, we do have a few different options as far as pretreatment machines. So um, you will need a way of pretreating your shirts. You'll need to cure your shirts. Uh, typically, people use a heat press. But for the screen printers out there who already have a conveyor oven, then you can uh, put the shirts through to uh, cure the shirts. When you're curing the, curing the shirts, it's not you don't need pressure. You just need heat and time. So even when we cure the, the shirts, 
uh, with the heat press, we, we just let it kind of hover above it uh, or just very, very light pressure. And then, of course, you need your, your designs and your shirts as well. So this is basically uh, the items to get started into DTG printing. So we've covered quite a bit of information here, uh, and I know uh, we've got some people who've had some questions, and uh, we have Meredith who's been helping us out. She's been great answering your questions, and if you have any, we'd love to just post them up there. We'd provide you uh, any answers that we may not have covered today. Let's see. Any of them? Meredith's been on top of it here answering it. Uh, Tim, one's about the pre-treatment. It says pre-treatment. Uh, is it as safe as the ink? It's a good question, and absolutely, yes, it is. Um, our, we have both the OECOTEX uh, certification for our inks as well as the pre-treatment. Um, that meets the U.S. Uh, requirements for um, uh, chemical safety. But it also, it's... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. There is no, um, it, especially if you're spraying it. Our our pretreatment does not have any uh, inhalation. Uh, so if you happen to inhale any of it, there's no irritants in that uh, pretreatment as well. And that's something to be aware of. But yes, uh, we take safety very serious at Epson. Um, it's something that we don't like to screw around with. So um, yes, the pretreatment and the inks are both uh, safe. Uh, not that you want to drink it, but it's safe to uh, um, safe to use. And if you're working with it and you happen to get it on you, it's not a problem. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, somebody did ask if this presentation is available after the webinar, and yes, we are recording it. Uh, we'll have this up live probably uh, in the next 24 hours, if not by Monday, we'll have it available, uh, and we'll be sending it out to to all you all as well. If you would like to, you know, go back over and catch any additional information that you you want to know. Let's see. Uh, do you know if Onyx RIP software is compatible? That's a good question. I know the uh, there's a number of different RIP products that are out there. Onyx does have a printer. I'm not sure if they've published or released a driver, um, but certainly we can check. Or um, if you are running Onyx, you can certainly check your um, uh, printer download options. Uh, to see if there is a printer that is there, uh, but I will take that as well as a uh, thing to check with them uh, to see if they do have a published uh, piece for it. But I do know they have the uh, parts for it or the uh, system to be able to drive it. Okay, and we'll take a few more here. Uh, there's some, been some questions on the platens. Um, there are quite a few different platens available. Uh, they do range around 325. I do believe that there's about six to eight different platens. Um, I know Epson offers quite a few different ones for like um, arm sleeves or uh, I, I believe there's a, if you were going to get into doing uh, children's clothing, uh, baby onesies or, or toddlers, you have to go obviously down to the smaller platen size uh, to do those. And there's some other third party platens out there um, for the shoes. And uh, there's a platen out there that you can even put a hat into, and it, it holds the hat over and allows you to, to print onto baseball hats. And a quick question, we'll take this one. It says, do the old platens for the F2000 work with the F2100? Uh, good news for this is yes, we try to keep as much compatibility between the two systems. So the same inks uh, used between the systems, no problem. Um, and any platens, if you already have an F2000, um, if you have that, any of the platens for that will fully be 100% compatible with the F2100 as well. And vice versa, the F2100 will work on an F2000 as well. Okay. Um, Guys, continue to write down any additional questions you have. We'll make sure that we answer them and respond back to you on that. But for the, now, we're, we are going to wrap up the webinar. We do appreciate you you joining us today. Um, and I personally want to thank Tim for joining in. I always enjoy doing the webinars with you, Tim. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.
definitely. And feel free if you have anything, my uh, email address, I did state it incorrectly before, and we just updated our email addresses. It's Darcy, D-A-R-C-I, at coastalpro.net. So feel free to give us a call or email me, and um, we'll be sure to respond back to everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon, and um, look forward to working with you.